for our call to worship. Let us read Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Please join me for our opening prayer. O Lord our God, we praise and thank you for this day of worship that we could freely express our hearts before you. O Lord, may you grant us understanding to grasp your truth, the truth that frees us from the enslavement of sin, the truth that unites us as a family and as a follower of you. As we continue to grow and mature into the likeness of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that may we learn to understand and appreciate one another. May the power of the gospel that unites us with one heart and with one mind to pursue you and to please you in our lives will continue to inspire us and move our hearts towards you. May no work of the enemy, O Lord, shall be allowed to play us in our thoughts and our feelings. But rather, O Lord, we pray that you give us discernment and spiritual vitality to resist and overcome the work of our enemy, so that our love to you and to our brethren be sincerely exemplified and expressed. Thank you, O Lord, for your word, for your truth. May you bless each one of us, O Lord, joining us now in our places, being one heart and mind in worshiping you. And to you, O Lord, we dedicate this time, this day. May you bless us all as we praise and thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen.
定在十字架，把自己献为祭。祝你的爱。
happy Lord's Day to each and every one of you, and I pray that all is well uh, in, this, uh, in these times that God has given us, a time to be able to worship God, okay, in spite, in, despite the pandemic. Now, many times Christians are scared to talk about Jesus Christ for the reason of condemnation. For, uh, they're scared okay, they're scared that people might reject them they they fear of everything else because of these fears Christians Christian churches are unable to grow in numbers and even grow in their faith the title of the message today is Christ the wisdom and power of God and we'll be looking at it uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. <clears throat> Please allow me to read it to you in the English Standard Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are, co who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Shall we bow down heads in prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Lord's Day. Another Lord's Day that you have given us, Father. <clears throat> another Lord's Day that we can listen to your word. Oh Lord, as we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 25 today, may you give us wisdom to understand the passage. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. In my last message, we talked about the grace of God given to the church in verses 4 to 9. Now, and in that message, we learned that the Corinthian church is a messy, messy church. Now, one of the many problems of the Corinthian church is division. That is in verses 10 to 17. Now, some people follow Apollos, some people follow Cephas, some people follow Paul, and some people follow Christ. In verses 10 to 12, Paul appeals to the Corinthian church about their quarrels, the division among them about who to follow. Factions have been developed about uh, about who do they follow now some people follow paul because he was the the one who planted the church in corinth he was the one who went there who shared the gospel of jesus christ to the people in corinth that's why a lot of people were loyal to him <coughs> some people follow apollos because he was a gifted speaker some people follow Cephas or Peter because of his Jewishness. He's being a Jew. He loves to, being a Jew. He, he still observes the culture, the traditions of the Jews. Now, some would say they follow Christ. They do not follow any human teacher. Now, this is probably a good thing. But it might have been in a it might have been said in a superior divisive and competitive way whatever the reason was it was clear that the church was divided split into factions 
Now, what started with preference resulted to judging and created factions, different groups. They divide themselves, uh, these people, that people, that people, and these people here. They, there was division among the church. <clears throat> so in verses 13 to 17, Paul tells them they should be united because they serve the same God. They serve the same Savior. Because Christ should be above. In our passage today, Paul tells the Corinthian church why it is important that the church should not be divided. Why they should be united as one. Paul says in verse 17, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Paul introduces the power of the cross against the wisdom of men. With the division in the church, this division that is caused by worldly standards, Paul points them back to the cross of Jesus Christ. First, he tells them the unity of Christ. That there is only one Savior. And there is only one body. The church is not a divided body, but it is one body, the body of Jesus Christ. Then he reminded them, he reminded them of their baptism. That they are in the same church. The same body, the same body, the body of Christ, the body of Christ Jesus. Then he brings them to the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, you know what's sad? These problems that the Corinthian church has been, that, that they were experiencing before, are still existing until today. We are experiencing the same problems in our churches. Churches are divided as to, as to who they want the pastor to be, who they want the preacher to be. They, they look at the preacher no longer on the cross. They look at the number of people attending no longer at the cross. They look at how the songs are sung no longer on the cross. They look at other things other than Jesus. And these problems are causing a lot of divisions in the churches. These problems cause people to, to, to make factions in their churches and from preference starts to judge the others and starts to condemn other people. And these are happening today and happening today even in our Chinese Christian churches. Chinese churches in the Philippines are not exempted to this. I'm sure you know one or two, at least one or two churches that are like this. Now, people look at the wisdom of the world rather than on the cross of Jesus Christ. There are even churches that invite People only when a certain preacher comes to preach. And when other preachers preach, they would not invite people. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that these things that are causing division among the churches today will no longer prevail. But may we look up May we look upon this, the wisdom of God, Jesus Christ. This is our message today, the wisdom of God. In verse 18, Paul says, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. God's wisdom is revealed in the cross of Jesus Christ. However, not 
everybody sees this. This is one of the many reasons why Christians do not share the gospel. No matter how you try to, to share the gospel to them, they will never understand. They will never see it. Why many Christians are embarrassed to talk about Jesus Christ. Now, so in our message today, we'll be talking about three different attitudes that people have about the cross of Jesus. Now, first, some people see the cross as a stumbling block. In verse 23a, the Bible says, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to, to Jews. Now, the cross of Jesus was, was a stumbling block for the Jews because they look for signs. They want signs. They want miracles. Okay? And, and, and they see the death of Jesus as a weakness for them. That the supposedly Messiah, the supposed Savior, dies on the cross that's weakness for them the history of israel is filled with miraculous signs okay? miraculous events when they left egypt they saw miraculous signs they saw miraculous events aside from the plagues that that, that, that struck egypt when they were about to cross the red sea God performed a marvelous miracle, a marvelous sign by opening up the Red Sea for them to be able to cross. <clears throat> In the days of Elijah and Elisha, they have seen miraculous things. When Jesus was on earth, that is why when Jesus was on earth, the leaders of Israel kept on asking him, to perform signs, okay? Signs from heaven, but Jesus refused. Israel did not understand the scriptures. They looked for a Messiah who would, who would come like a mighty warrior, a mighty warrior who would conquer the, and defeat all their enemies. Restoring the glory of the kingdom of David. They thought he would be a king whose kingdom will never end. A physical king with a physical kingdom. That's how they see, that's what they expect of the Messiah. That is why in Acts chapter 1 verse 6, they asked Jesus. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That was what they were expecting for. <coughs> this is what they were hoping for. The scribes knew the, what the Old Testament was, was saying about the Messiah, that he would suffer and die. But they did not understand that the Messiah would first suffer and die before he would go into his glory. Because the Jews were looking for signs and miracles. For them, the death of Jesus on the cross is a stumbling block. Because for them, it is weakness. It's defeat. How could anyone give their faith to a son of a carpenter? Just a son of a carpenter. How could, they, how could they give that to him? A son of a carpenter who died a very shameful death, death on the cross by crucifixion. This is the same thing that people, that, that, that people what people think today. They look at Jesus as not true because they could not see him. They want signs and miracles. That is why when they see something unusual, 
they go to it and worship it immediately. They think it's God. But Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God for salvation. It is Jesus Christ alone who gives salvation to us. This Jesus Christ is the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Second, some people see the cross as foolishness. Now, verse 23b says, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and folly to Gentiles. For the Greeks, the death of Jesus on the cross is foolishness. Kalokohan. Okay? Something that's not admirable because they emphasize on wisdom. They look on, uh, they look on the cross, they see Jesus die on the cross. There's no wisdom in it. For them, they see wisdom in their Greek philosophy. That's why there's a lot of, there are a lot of um, Greek philosophies, Greek philosophers. But they do not see wisdom. They do not see wisdom in the cross of Jesus. They look at the cross of Jesus in a human point of view. That is why they cannot see God's great plan of salvation. Sadly, this is one of the problems not only, not only of the unbelievers, but also of the church today, also of the people who call themselves Christians. One of the problems with Christianity today is that people want to seek advices from other people instead of the Bible, instead of going to the scriptures. <coughs> when problem would arise, they, they go to ask pastors, they go to ask church leaders, the elders, the deacons, church members. They ask them, that's good, that's good when you have problems, you go look for a spiritual advisor, that's good. Okay. That is what a church is for. To edify one another, to help each other. That's what the church is for. That's good. But the problem is, when you ask them, okay, you have to, if they ask God, okay, if, they got, if they ask God for an answer, they would say, yes, I prayed about it. Yes, I did pray about it. But when you ask them, do you read the Bible? Do you seek for God's answers through the Bible? The answer is usually a no or just silence. Man seek wisdom of the world. People look for wisdom from man rather than from the scriptures. The Greeks look for a brilliant philosophy. A philosophy that would give them the secret of life. And this is also the wisdom that we are looking for. The secret of life. The secret of happiness. The secret of successful friendship. Successful relationship. Successful business. Successful family. The secrets of that. That's why we go and ask people, ask elderly people, ask the pastor, ask doctors, ask engineers. We want to know everything, everything about the world. But we don't go to the scriptures and seek God's wisdom. Man, the, the Greeks and us today, human beings today, Look, okay, look for philosophers. Look for people who can give them the secret of life. And this is also what we are looking for today. But you can never, we can never find this wisdom if we don't go to God. We can never see the secret of life 
if we don't go to God. For thousands of years, philosophers still haven't found the secret of life. Because the secret of life can only be found in Jesus Christ, the Word of God, God Himself. Go to Jesus Christ, seek Him, and you shall find. That's what the Bible says, seek and you shall find. I'm not telling you that you will know everything. But at least you will know the mystery of the secret of life. And that secret of life is Jesus Christ. It's not actually a secret. But it is life itself. It's not a secret because it is written to us for us to read through the Bible. We can find it in the scriptures, in the Bible. Seek and you shall find. When the Bible said, the truth will set you free, it's not talking about the truth, true or false. Okay? It's talking about Jesus will set you free. John 14, 6. Okay? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth that will set us free. Without looking at Jesus, we will never, let me repeat that, we will never find this truth if we don't look at Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ himself is the truth. He is the wisdom of God. And you can find that wisdom only in him, only in Jesus Christ. Only in the word of God. Third, some people believe and experience the power and the wisdom of the cross. Now, the Apostle Paul did not change his message when, when he turned from the Jewish audience to the Greek audience. His message was constant. His message was the same. He preached Christ crucified. Although the gospel is a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness for the Greeks, Paul preached Christ crucified. That stumbling block, that foolishness, gives us salvation that can only be found in Jesus Christ alone. The message of the cross is a stumbling block to the unbelievers. And, and be, uh, because this, the message of the cross does not really make sense for those who do not have the wisdom of God. It does not make sense. Paul says in verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified. But we Preach Christ crucified. Looking at these words, Christ and Messiah talks about victory, about salvation. Right? We preach Christ crucified. Christ, Messiah, Savior, Redeemer, victory. Right? Crucified. Crucifixion is about humiliation. Death, defeat. Does that make sense? But we preach Christ positive, crucified, negative. Does that make sense? Giving hope to something that has death. It's quite a contradiction. Christ, victory, salvation, crucified, death, defeat. This is why it's a stumbling block for the unbelievers. Okay? And it's also foolishness, a stumbling block for the Jews and foolishness for the Greeks. But to us Christians, the cross is the power of God. Those who have been called by God's grace realize 
that Christ is God's power and God's wisdom. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are to look at the power of God in Christ's death and resurrection. That in this death and resurrection, we have died with our sins and we have been resurrected with Jesus Christ. In verse 25, it says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The foolishness of God does not mean that does not mean that God is foolish. Does not, it does not mean that the gospel is foolishness. But it is referring to the gospel who people believe to be foolishness. The gospel that the world thinks as foolishness is actually the wisdom of God that gives us salvation. May we always look upon the gospel, Jesus Christ. Shall bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have called us unto yourself. We thank you because you have given us the wisdom in Jesus Christ, the wisdom that we need. That we have been given wisdom so we can understand your word. Thank you, Father. We pray that you would make us people who seek your wisdom always instead of wisdom of the world. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>